name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. This Sunday, uh, we began the season of Advent, and fittingly, it is a time when we are reminded to draw closer to Christ. Last Sunday, uh, we were reminded of the second coming of Christ, uh, the judgment, and it fittingly is uh, something to be feared. There will be a reckoning. Uh, but lest, lest we fear that too excessively, the church bids us uh, to begin this week meditating upon the first coming of Christ when he came as a wee babe in a manger uh, with a message of peace, forgiveness, and love. So this is the time to, to draw closer to Christ, the time to deepen our relationship with him. And it is good to remember that in drawing close to Christ, we are drawing close to God, the source of everything. Christ has two natures, the nature of man, the nature of God. And as God, all things were created through him, all truth, all goodness, all reality, all existence. And so when we get to know Christ in a deeper way, we come to understand those things in a deeper way. Everything, everything is benefited when we have a deeper relationship with Christ. Now there is a, a growing attitude in the world today that religion is a delusional fairy tale, something that the weak-minded need in order to give them a sense of peace or religion is something that uh, is used by the opportunistic to take advantage of other people. Uh, this is not the case with the Catholic religion, because it's true. I mean, other religions, yes, all the other false religions in the world, uh, that very well can be true, especially the false religions of atheism, scientism, and political correctness. Those are all religions. Uh, but God, the author of the Catholic religion, is the same author of the world, the author of the Bible, the author of truth, the author of science, and so on. If you want to get to know anything in the world better, get to know God, get to know Christ. You'll understand it at a more fundamental level. It's not going to make you a scientist, but you'll be able to put everything together as a whole better. That's, in fact, what wisdom is. Wisdom is the knowledge of all things as they relate to God. That's the most fundamental and important kind of knowledge, the most fundamental truth. Now, uh, so the, the, the opposite is true. If the further you get away from Christ, the further you leave God, uh, the further away you get from understanding how everything in the world fits together. The more disjointed and illogical the world becomes. And that's as true for societies, perhaps more true for societies than it is even for individuals. And that's what we're seeing in, in the world today. Our societies, the further and further and further away they get from Christ, the further they're getting away from the source, the wellspring of truth, goodness, reality, existence. That's why starting to, it feels like we're starting to live in this, this skewed, twisted version of reality. Like I'm, I feel like I'm in crazy land. There's a reason for it. The world is leaving behind truth leaving behind goodness, leaving behind sanity, because they are leaving behind Christ. When a society does this, it doesn't end well. And I'll tell you, the first society to, to operate in this manner, the first society to leave God behind and want to create its own society was Satan and the bad angels. And Satan said to God, I'm tired of living reality according to your rules. I want to have my own truth I want to have my own version of goodness, my own whatever it was. I don't want you. That's what Satan said to God. So he took the bad angels with him, and he created his perfect government, his perfect society, which is hell. And that is the final trajectory of every society which rejects God. It's going to end up being a hell on earth. And this is different. It's not as e even the ancient pagans who, who, who uh, they didn't reject Christ, they just didn't know who he was. They still knew, and many of them, most of them, accepted that, yes, the, the gods exist, we just don't know who he is, or they were mistaken about who he was, but the ancient pagan religions accepted there was an authority over them. 
there was a God who had created the world, or at least was involved in it, and they had to respect his laws. But now we live in a society which not only does not believe in God, it hates God. It hates the idea of an authority over itself. And a society that hates Christ is going to hate everything that goes with him. Peace, goodness, morality, truth. Very dangerous. Uh, and these, these um, society gets to the point to where it doesn't just believe there is no God, it replaces God with themselves. That's what we're seeing, is the attempt to replace God with man, and man is now the author of reality. Man is now the author of the universe, the rules of, of existence, and good and evil, and so on. That's, that's what we're seeing these days. And it has catastrophic consequences. Uh, because um, the world is too proud to admit when it's wrong, and the world will come out with ideas that are impossible. An example would be, uh, transgender. We're not going to accept the boundaries of nature, that, that men are, are you're, you're born with your gender and you can't change it. We don't accept that as a limit. We're going to go beyond that and we're going to change that and say that, you know what, we have the technology, we have the desire, we're going to change this reality to suit ourselves. We're going to call men women and women men and we're going to pretend like it works. And they're too proud to admit when they're wrong. And any, anybody can see it. You see these women entering men's sports and getting crushed, and men entering women's sports, and it just doesn't work. This society is collapsing around us in, in terms of this, this nonsensical, these delusional ideas about reality, and our society will not admit that it's wrong. And they're trying to get us to play along with that delusion. That's what happens when, when you leave God behind. You leave behind the source of sanity, of right thinking, of mental health. And we're seeing that more and more and more. That is extremely dangerous to any society. The uh, ancient pagans had a phrase, because uh, they, the, they saw it coming. You, you can only abandon God's laws, you can only uh, um, transgress so, me, so much of the natural order uh, before society, you, you will destroy yourself. And the, 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 the pagans said, um, those whom the gods would destroy, they first make mad. And that's what we're seeing. Uh, we are seeing a society that is increasingly becoming intolerant of those who refuse to go along with their warped and twisted ideas of reality. No, this is not true. Marriage is between one man and one woman. Abortion is murder. We're not going to participate. You cannot do this. God has laws. There, are, there is right, there is wrong, and you can't change that. Society hates to hear that. And those who stand firm to those principles end up being bullied, gaslighted, uh, shamed, forced, coerced, pressured. It's no surprise. Uh, for a society that's left God behind and is making up its own invention about morality, it's going to invent its own uh, rules of, of right and wrong. Yeah, you know what, this isn't right, but we're going to do it anyways because we have to, to achieve such and such and whatever. We see the direction it's going. Uh, but I mention this because... Uh, um, I've been feeling more and more like, like I am living in crazy world. I was thinking, am I really crazy? Okay, no, I'm not crazy. And so I, I want you to, to believe that also, right? You're not crazy. The rest of the world really is going insane. Our society is losing it. Um, so don't let the pressure get to you. Don't let yourselves feel bullied or gaslighted or whatever I mentioned. Um, that's what happens when society leaves behind Christ. So just expect it. Uh, what we have to do is learn how to live in spite of it, learn how to live in the midst of it. And that's not easy. It's becoming harder and harder. Uh, but I'm, I'm going I'm to tell you how to do that. I'm going to point some things out in future sermons and tell you how to live in spite of it. Uh, this is the first in a series of sermons on madness. So we're going to hear more. Um, but the, the first thing you do is refuse to live according to the delusion. And what really, I think what really is, what I would like to point out is it's even affecting the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church, which should be pointing out these are falsehoods, these are lies, these are delusions. Uh, the Church is not doing that. And then sometimes condoning it. I know I've heard of Catholic schools where it accepts transgender students and tells the other kids you have to use the wrong pronoun. You can't tell kids to lie. Right, that, is, that, is a, that is an example of the Church that is not doing its job. 
uh, or Catholic priests who will talk about uh, homosexuality as part of God's ordered creation instead of the perversion. It is a perversion. God did not intend that. Or you have, uh, sadly, bishops that will not come out and call out the incongruity, right, the illogicality of a politician who claims to be a good Catholic, who stands for everything opposite the church and still wants to receive communion and call themselves a good Catholic. The bishops are not condemning that. Right? So we're seeing this failure. We're seeing this in the church. We're seeing, we're seeing uh, uh, even priests going along with the delusions of the world and telling people, uh, Jesus is watching you. You should obey authority. You, it's charitable to do whatever. It's charitable to play along with other people's delusion. It's not. Not at all. Don't allow yourselves to be guilt-tripped into doing something. You can see for yourself this is not true. Now, this becomes an assault on the mind, on reason itself. The closer we get to Christ, the closer we get to reason, to rationality, to mental health. And so we should expect, I, I would say, expect to see more of this in the future. It's not going to get better. It is only going to get worse. Uh, but we have to have um, that firm faith that solid relationship with our Lord in order to withstand it. And so that's what I want us to do this, this, this Advent season. Uh, reflect on that. When, when I draw, right, when all of us draw, when we pray, when we spend time in prayer, when we spend that time in meditation, uh, we're drawing closer to the source of all truth. Our wisdom should be expanding. Our understanding of the order of the world, uh, how things fit together, uh, we're gonna have a fun, more fundamental understanding. Uh, it's it's going to make sense. Life makes sense the closer we get to Christ. Uh, meditate upon that, right? Meditate upon the fact that he's all truth, all goodness. And don't fear, I would like to end with the, um, uh, the prayer from this, um, our mass this morning, the introit. Let us take to heart these words. We have nothing to fear. To thee, O Lord, I have lifted up my soul. In thee, O God, I put my trust. For none of them who put their trust in thee shall be confounded. Put forth your power, O Lord, we beseech thee and come, that with you as our deliverer we may obtain our salvation. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.